Hi everyone, thank you for joining us in this CNCF webinar. My name is Nick, I'm heading the DevRel team at SpectroCloud and today we're going to be talking about Kairos, an open source project that helps you build the immutable Kubernetes infrastructure. And today I'm joined by Ettore. Hi, I'm Ettore, I head of open source from SpectroCloud. And the topic for today is going to be Kairos deep dive with some demos, but first we're going to be um, handling a couple of questions with Etore so that we can introduce the project better. Uh, so, first of all, Etore, um, can you tell us a little bit about your background? Yeah, um, I've been working um, in the open source for um, actually more than 15 years. Um, I've been an um, open source um, contributor in several um, open source projects, and I've been uh, also working on um, Golang, um, operative systems in general, I was also again to developer, um, Sabion developer as well. Um, they are Linux distribution that are um, very well known. Um, so, and yeah, I've been um, having a lot of mixed background. So I have also experience with Cloud Foundry. I was also a developer in, in, um, cloud, in the Cloud Foundry community as well for uh, SUSE. So yeah, I have quite a mixed of background. Okay, cool. Sounds good. And um, so can you tell us a little bit about uh, what Kairos is, Kairos is and what motivated you to uh, to create that project? Yeah, actually Kairos um, started from a need, I would like to say, because um, in one of the open source projects that I'm contributing, which is um, uh, Sabayon, which now is Mocachino, um, we are actually um, really needed um, an immutable and distributed infrastructure. So uh, it came out from a need because um, we have um, we have a lot of build systems but, um over the um, over the, the contributors, so we actually needed a um, system which was immutable, distributable, and uh, distributed and scalable. Um, and um, on top of that, uh, right, we I, I also started to um, as a passion for immutable systems. So uh, I was a long time k 3 os user myself. Um, I've been working also at SUSE and Ranger. So. Um, I, we, I actually have a deep uh, love for the design of immutable systems. And that's where actually Kairos is born. Okay, that's cool. So we said that Kairos is a uh, meta distribution. So what do we mean by that? What is a meta distribution? Yeah, good, good. that's a good question. So um, Kairos is a meta distribution because um, it can be overlaid on top of other uh, Linux distributions. So um, it is more or less, uh, I don't want to say like Gentoo because also Gentoo uh, it's a <laughs> meta distribution, but um, Kairos doesn't have a base uh, system. So you can actually use whatever OS you want uh, as a base. Uh, indeed, in the Kairos release, you can find um, images which are based on Alpine, OpenSUSE, Ubuntu, um, there is literally no limitation on that aspect. Okay, sounds good. Uh, so can you tell us uh, a little bit more about, you know, like the Kairos Foundation and just walk you through a introduction to, to Kairos and also what makes Kairos different from, from other solutions? Yeah, I would be happy to do that. Let me share. All right. So um, Keros um, tries to um, try to solve one of the issues which is um, crucial in the edge in the bare metal when deploying Kubernetes um, on bare metals. So first of all, tries to um, what, what is what is what we are trying to do uh, while, uh, while uh, deploying Kubernetes at the edge. Uh, we are trying to move the computation more close to the data and to the consumers of our data. Um, so our cloud native application. Uh, we want uh, them to be more close. So not only for increased um, throughput, um, let, uh, so better latency over the network, but also to, to have better analytics, for example, or local data AI, um, so processing, and everything which can be interactive, user interactive. So that brings a lot of challenges. Um, so one of those, for example, is the, what you do with the machine. So what's the management of um, uh, management life cycle of a machine? Um, what are actually the, um, the deployments and how do you handle the update uh, at the S level of the machine? And also, what about Kubernetes, your distribution? So 
Um, and what about security? So there are a lot of um, open questions uh, when we when we think about uh, Kubernetes applied at the edge. Um, and one of the most important pieces is also um, how we do customize the OS, because um, in an ideal world, um, if we think about immutability, we, we think at system that doesn't change, but still we would like to introduce some changes to the machine, like um, having additional kernel models, depending on the on the issue that you are trying to face where you are deploying Kubernetes. So it needs to be still a little bit flexible, the mechanism to keep in, um, that into account. So Kairos, um, basically, um, it's not only a Meta Linux distribution in by itself, but it's pre, um, very tied to Kubernetes. Indeed, the, the whole life cycle uh, management um, is through Kubernetes. That means also upgrades, um, are managed via Kubernetes um, and they can follow um, deployment uh, rollout strategy like you are used for application. You, so you can apply the same uh, logic, um, but instead to uh, the OS. Um, and Keras itself, it's a, just a single container image. Um, that's uh, probably the, the aspect that I would like to underline here. So. Um, the image itself contains all the requirements for the image to be bootable. And that includes also the kernel and the init RT, for example. So um, that's make it a um, little bit different from other distros, uh, also other immutable distros, where, where still um, during the upgrades, there are more moving pieces. With Kairos, there is the atomic, uh, the upgrade is very atomic um, because it's one single image that gets swapped. Um, Okay, so let me take a step back here. So what we are saying is that basically Kairos helps you build immutable operating system from whatever container images. And on top of that can also help you deploy and distribute Kubernetes on top. Is that correct? Correct. Correct. Exactly. So um, it, it is driven by, it is focused by running Kubernetes, but it can also run other workloads, right? Um, the design by itself, it's very um, distro agnostic, um, and it doesn't have uh, any string attached to, um, to specific implementation. There are a bunch of requirements um, by the layout, the layout that we are, are adopting, um, and this we can carry over um, across all the distros. Um, and when an OS is going to be converted, let's say, to a Keros uh, one, it will inherit all the, the features of Kairos. Um, one of the most important ones, um, it's the installation process of Kairos itself. So um, if you boot um, Kairos ISO by default, you will be displayed with um, a QR code. Um, and the QR code actually you can use to, um, to complete the installation. So in this way, um, the, at the first boot, the node is waiting for a configuration. Um, and the configuration, it's, then you can give it by logging into the machine. Um, you can actually do an interactive install. So there is an installer with, that guides you step by step to set up a Kubernetes cluster with just a couple of questions. Other, otherwise, you use the QR code with the Kero CLI that it will connect to the machine and it will push the configuration. So uh, this is one, for example, of the key features that would inherit as well, whatever. Um, um, meta Linux distribution you are going to build on top of Kairos. And the same way, um, you get aspects like um, being cloud native, uh, which is um, container image based. That means you can use. Um, okay, so, so let me interrupt you. So, that, mm -hmm. does that mean that when you're, you, you want to build your uh, operating system, you want to deploy your operating system, it's as easy as creating a Docker file? And then you, yeah. what you're also saying is that you can use Kubernetes itself and Kubernetes CRDs to, to manage like the same thing, the, the automated installation of all that? Yes, exactly, exactly. So uh, the, um, <clears throat> what, what is doing um, Keros in behind the scene uh, when doing an upgrade, it's creating um, an image file on your state partition on the disk. So during installation, um, Keros is going to uh, have um, a very static partitioning schema that you can customize, but th there will be a strong separation between the OS data and the user data. Um, this was also 
um, a little um, design choice um, that have something in common with Android, right? So uh, if you want to think it in that way, uh, so you have a um, section of the system which is reserved to us. And when we do an upgrade, what we do, we just swap an image and we pull a container image. So you can use the container image as a single source of truth um, in the whole um, Keros lifecycle management. That means from the booting an, an artifact that comes from a container image, you can create an ISO, or you can use uh, the container image for the upgrades. And nodes, when they have to upgrade, they will just point to a container registry to consume the new image. Okay, so and when you upgrade, is there any possibility to roll back in case of uh, failure? So yes, in, in case of failure, actually there is a boot uh, assessment strategy um, built in in Keros. So let's say that you are going to upgrade and uh, the upgrade is going to fail, um, it will automatically boot into the fallback system. The fallback system is uh, the former image that was uh, used to boot before the upgrade to happen. So I want to underline that the upgrade is an atomic action. It doesn't happen. Um, for example, you don't reboot the node and perform the upgrade. The upgrade is going to run in the system, and the next time it's going to reboot it, it will be already the system uh, which is meant to be upgraded. So uh, the strategy that we apply there is assessment of the boot. And in case if it fails, then you get back to the system, which was the passive one. OK, sounds good. Um, and also, I wanted to ask you, um, so this is a, a, an operating system in the end, right? So uh, how, and knowing that it's immutable, how can you customize your operating system? Meaning that how can you add you know, specific users or configure your DNS settings, those kind of things? That's a, good, that's a great question. So um, Keros have, as an um, input configuration for the user, um, adopts cloud init. Um, so um, we stick to this format for everything. And this um, goes um, through user configuration, um, I don't know, running a um, generic command on the host before booting. Um, everything that um, his uh, customization has to happen uh, into a cloud init configuration file. Uh, now, Keros by itself uh, supports having a cloud config file during installation, so it can be served um, via, for example, HTTP. It can be also served manually, so you can copy the file and perform the installation via the QR code. So what you send to the machine, it's always a cloud init configuration file. So for example, if you run Keros in a cloud provider, it will actually try uh, to get the cloud init from the data sources of the cloud provider. So you can specify the cloud init config file directly in the um, control management panel of the cloud provider as well. OK, that's that's very handy. And, and so I, I would say that the, the follow up question is, you know, because it's still an operating system, one important thing is how do you manage packages in that operating system? So yes, that, that's a great question again, because um, as we said, um, Keros by itself, it's a container image. so. We have to see that as a pipeline. So if you want to customize the OS, um, you must rebuild the OS. That's a key uh, strategy of an immutable system. You are not uh, tweaking the system by itself uh, while it's running, but instead you rebuild a new image and you push that image as an upgrade for your for your cluster. Although um, there are instructions that you can leverage in Keros to uh, handle some customization to some degree, uh, but the streamlined use case would be to rebuild the OS from scratch. Okay, Tori, thanks very much for all this information. Now, what I can propose is to walk us through a couple of quick demos. This first demo shows how to deploy Kairos configuration at the edge by simply booting up an ISO image available from the release and using the generated QR code. So here, this is a virtual machine we have just created from VMware vCenter. We've mounted the ISO image and now waiting for the QR code to be displayed on screen. So now let's assume we have the QR code as a PNG file. I have that file on my machine here where I'll use the Keras command to deploy the configuration at the Kubernetes edge location. That's one parameter I need. The second is the YAML file containing the Kairos configuration. Here you have an example where a couple of customization options have been defined, like the SSH key, a Kairos user I want to create with the password Kairos, 
and also the DNS customization. On top of that, we are adding the Kubernetes layer by enabling K3S. Now we are ready to send the configuration. We have a couple of parameters here. First, the PNG file, the YAML configuration file, and we also specify on which drive to install the system here slash dev slash SDA. Finally, we also want the system to reboot, so we add that option too. Okay, the payload has been sent. Let's take a look at the edge server. The payload is being received, and we see that the installation is starting. After a couple of minutes, the system reboots, and we can now access the machine via SSH. Here, I'm logging in without password thanks to my SSH key. And let's check that Kubernetes has been installed and that we have basic K3S environment up and running. Okay, everything looks good. Let's move to the next demo where we're going to automate Kairos installation directly from Kubernetes by using custom resource definitions. This time, we need a YAML file that contains the configuration of the Kairos OS artifact. This is not a Kubernetes native object, but we have added a custom resource definition into the Kubernetes API. That means that the OS artifact configuration can be understood by Kubernetes. A custom controller will then monitor CRUD operations on that object and will take appropriate actions. In our case, we're going to create a new object which will start the build of the ISO image. This time, the image will directly include the custom cloud init configuration. We won't need an interactive installation like it happened in the previous demo with the QR code. New Kubernetes objects are created to build and serve the ISO to the end user. A pod is created to start a process that builds the ISO. A service will also be created so the ISO can directly be downloaded via the network. Here, we are monitoring the build process, which takes a couple of minutes. When it's finished, we're using curl to download the custom ISO directly from the Kubernetes service. The next step is to mount the ISO into the virtual machine and see how it boots up and if we can log in with the Kairos user from the console. Here, we are at the stage where the installation process has finished and the system has rebooted. We're ready to log in as the Kairos user to see if the cloud init configuration has been applied. Okay, we can log in with our user. All good. Now let's jump to our last demo. We'll show you how to orchestrate a Kairos upgrade from your Kubernetes cluster right at the edge. We're going to use a similar approach in the sense that we're going to add a custom resource definition to create a new object type in Kubernetes. This time, it's going to be a plan custom resource available from the system upgrade controller project, which provides a general purpose Kubernetes native upgrade controller for nodes. This plan contains the information to perform the Kairos upgrade. Here, a couple of parameters to highlight. The target image version, which includes both the latest version of Kairos and K3S. And we also specify the upgrade image which is Kairos OpenSUSE in our case. We deploy the plan object in Kubernetes by using kubectl on the Kubernetes cluster at the edge. It triggers the orchestrated upgrade of the cluster. The process is executed from a pod that is automatically created as the plan gets deployed. Here, we're monitoring the logs from that pod. If you look closely, you will see that the current active image is changed to passive and that the new image is now replacing the active. Then the system is rebooting. As you log back to Kubernetes, you will see that the pod is now marked as completed and both the Kubernetes version and the Kairos versions have been updated. That concludes our demos for today. Okay, that was very nice demos. Um, and now, Ettore, uh, can you walk us through some of the big items of what's coming up in the roadmap? Yeah, sure. I would be very happy to. Um, so we have actually uh, very exciting items in our roadmaps. Um, we are going to um, now we are looking at integration, which is um, the area which we are focusing on uh, creating and uh, making possible to create this um, derivatives more easy with um, without the derivative creation with Kairos. So 
um, we are focusing on creating a controller uh, which is letting you um, able to to recreate directly um, immutable distribution um, chaos based from Kubernetes by itself. So it will be completely driven by the API. Uh, there are so many other um, topics that we are going to touch. Also, for example, uh, secure supply chain with cosine. And because, for example, has, as we said, um, everything is a container image in Keros, also the OS by itself, and it's um, published into container registries, we can apply all, uh, all the um, tools in the container ecosystem at the OS level by itself. That means also uh, be able to verify the OS with, um, with cosine uh, verified images, and also to be able to create a SBOM uh, service below material um, reports directly uh, with the images by itself. And yes, we, we are also having a track for um, security, Arden and security. And we have we are also planning to have um, a with CAPI uh, as a lifecycle management. And on top of that, um, we already have uh, partial support to peer, what we call a peer to peer uh, support in Kairos which lets you create a um, cluster uh, on top of lib peer-to-peer. -peer. Um, basically, that means you can stretch a Kubernetes cluster up to uh, 1,000 kilometers already. So you can already create cluster that uh, have automatically connection um, between themselves, uh, regardless of the network, thanks to lib peer-to-peer. -peer. But yes, this is uh, still experimental. Uh, and and that's all, more or less. So we have other exciting items, but that's that's the one that I would like to underline, I think. OK, sounds good. So uh, can you tell us like where people can find you? Um, do you handle like any office hours if they want to contribute or learn a little bit more about Kairos? Yes, um, that's actually a very good question. We have um, a Matrix channel, uh, so you can enjoy Kairos IO on Matrix. Uh, we are on Twitter as well, uh, in Kairos OS. Uh, and also we are on GitHub, of course. So everything is open source, so we, you can find us there. And uh, we use GitHub discussion to um, to communicate uh, with the community. Um, and we have office hours. So um, there is the event uh, calendar that you can find in the in our website that you can use to join. So we have um, a weekly appointment. So we hope you find Kairos very exciting as much as we do. We also hope this video has been interesting and managed to make you keen to join our community. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.